worship here at Christ Lutheran Church this Lord's Day. Hi. That's my grandson, Gunner, saying hi. And hi to all of you watching on Facebook. It is my um, blessed opportunity to give thanks unto the Lord, for he has made me well. He has brought me through the storm, and I'm out to the other side seeing sunny skies and fair weather ahead. And um, I thank you for those of you that pray for me. And um, I want to instill something in you that's very important. Because being away from the body of Christ hurt my heart. Being away from you hurt my heart. And I can't understand why people would be away from each other as the body of Christ. I, I think it's really important that the fellowship and communion that we have together as Christians um, is so important. It's, it's, it's probably, believe it or not, more important than family. And family's important. But this is a special family. God, we're part of the family of God. We've been adopted into God's family. And that's why it's really important to be here for worship and to be here for Holy Communion. Unless you can't come for some reason regarding illness or whatever, be here for Holy Communion. Don't sit out when it's Holy Communion Sunday. Come to church. Partake of the Lord's body and blood and, and um, experience and discern the body of Christ amongst one another. But discern the body of Christ as yourselves. Discern the body of Christ which you will partake of. So let me just instill these thoughts into your, into your heads and your hearts. It's very, very important. Um, just looking ahead here in the, in the week, Beloved Apprentice, it's Tuesday nights. Confirmation class. We we did one via um, uh, Google Meet. Google Meet, yeah. And um, last week I just wasn't up to it, but this week we're going to meet in person, Lord willing. And um, Wednesday night uh, we'll be here for our Gospel of John Bible study. Now um, food share dates were changed. Uh, packing is this Tuesday at one thirty. And um, Thursday next week, this coming week, um, at uh, 11.30 to distribute the food share bags. So, um, yeah. Any other announcements that we may have? No? Okay. Well, once again, we want to welcome you. And, and, and if you're watching and worshiping with us, um, I pray that the Spirit of the Lord would be with you, among you and in you as we come together to worship and to receive from the Lord today. The Lord be with you. Let's pray together. Heavenly morning, <laughs> Heavenly Father, as morning dawns and day awakes, to you I bring my need. O oh, gracious God, my source of strength in you, I live and breathe. Each hour is yours by wisdom plan. Each deed empowered by sovereign hands. Renew my spirit, help me stand. Be glorified today. Father, as day unfolds, I seek your will in all of life's demands. And though the tempter tries me still, I cling to your commands. Let every effort of my life Display the matchless worth of Christ. Make me a living sacrifice. Be glorified today. As the sun gives way to darkest night, your spirit still is here. And though my strength fades like the light, <laughs> new mercies will appear. I rest in you. Father, abide with me until our trials and suffering. Give way to final victory. Be glorified today, Lord. Be glorified, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. On the 
let's prepare our hearts and minds to, to confess our sins unto the Lord together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, and renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And now Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our first song today, I ask you to stand with me as you're able. Sweet is the work, my God and King. But praise thy name, give thanks and sing. If you would like to sing this from the red hymnal, it's number 183. In the red hymnal, you can have the music in front of you. All right? All right. Let's praise the Lord today. Lift up your hands and rejoice in God your Savior. some left, please pick one up and read it. It will change your life about the church. Thank you. The Old Testament reading is from Genesis 45, verses 1 through 15. Sometime after this, the cupbearer of the king of Egypt and his baker had committed an offense against the Lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was angry with his two officers, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker. And he put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard in the prison where Joseph was confined. The captain of the guard appointed Joseph to be with them and he attended them. They continued for some time in custody. And one night they both dreamed, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt who were confined in the prison, each his own dream and each dream with its own interpretation. 
When Joseph came to them in the morning, he saw that they were troubled. So he asked Pharaoh's officers, who were with him in custody in his master's house, why are your faces downcast today? And they said to him, we have had dreams and there is no one to interpret them. And Joseph said to them, do not interpretations belong to God? Please tell them to me. So the chief cupbearer told his dream to Joseph and said to him, in my dream, there was a vine before me and on the vine, there were three branches. As soon as it budded, its blossoms shot forth and the clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup and placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. Then Joseph said to them, or said to him, this is, my, this is its interpretation. The three branches are three days. In three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your office and you shall place Pharaoh's cup in his hand as formerly when you were his cupbearer. Only remember me when it is well with you and please do not and please do me the kindness to mention to Pharaoh and so get me out of this house. For I was indeed stolen out of the land of the Hebrews and here also I have done nothing that they should put me into the pit. Our gradual today is from Psalm 103 verses 1 through 13. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are impressed he made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. Amen. There's a special song now called Forgiven. I'd like you to listen to the lyrics very closely to this song. They're very important, so please pay attention to the words.
morning, everyone. Our New Testament reading is from Corinthians 15, 21 through 26. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all shall be made alive. But each in his given order, Christ the firstfruits, then the coming of those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom of God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed, death. Here ends our readings. Today's gospel lesson is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verses 27 through 38. But I say unto you, hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. The one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. From one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you. And from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? Even sinners do the same thing. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful, as your Father is merciful. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. 
For the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to thee, O Christ. Please be seated. Today's message theme is through suffering in Christ, you'll understand God's plan for your life. And the goal for the message today is for you to understand that you would find the meaning of God's plan in your life as a follower of Jesus, even if your life includes suffering. The title of my message this morning is The Enemy of Suffering. The Enemy of Suffering. And I'm concentrating on Luke chapter 6, verse 35. Through 36, where it says, But love your enemies, do what is good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for He is gracious to the ungrateful and evil. Be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. Suffering at the hand of the enemy. Well, today for me is day 18 after um, being stricken with that COVID-19 thing. And Sue's three days ahead of me. So um, it's very interesting that um, the Lord gave me the title of the, my message today, The Enemy of Suffering. And this whole scripture passage here talks about judging others and and loving your enemies which is really interesting but I'll try to bring this together with the idea of suffering now when you think of an enemy you think of someone who's bringing suffering to you right when you're in war obviously be ready to suffer right or when a bully comes to you and, and starts pushing you around, you know, he appears to be an enemy and he pushes you around, takes your lunch money, does whatever, right? I've learned something that I haven't ever learned before these past 18 days um, with remembering the time when I had to see... Um, a man in a facility that had COVID and I was scared out of my mind. I had to put all the paraphernalia on to go in and see this person. And yet when I walked through the door, the Holy Spirit took my fear away. And I was able to minister to this person. Suffering at the hand of the enemy is my first part today. And I want to ask you a couple questions here, and I want you to think about it, about these questions. The first question is, if the Lord had not helped you until you had been thankful to him, what would have become of you? What would have become of you? If the Lord had not helped you until you had been thankful, what would have become of you? Are there times in your life when you thought to yourself that you would certainly die? Have you ever been there? Have you ever even thought about that? Do you remember the accident? Do you remember the illness? Do you remember the loss of loved one or loved ones? The loss of your job or even the loss of a prized possession? It's interesting the past month of my life and my and Sue's that we were earnestly desiring a vacation. A vacation away from everything. And we drove to Florida. What a great drive it was. When I crossed the state line from Georgia into Florida, I was home. Florida is my home. That's where I'm from. I was born and raised there. <laughs> it 
This month has, has brought us a lot of experience, a lot of joy, a lot of sorrow, and suffering. Do you not know that it is God who gives and takes away? Do you know that? Do you know that it's God who gives and takes away? Do you know that it's God who gives life and takes it away as well? Do you know that? Do you not know that God can use the devil himself or even demons to inflict you in any way? Do you know that? It's true. Thanks be to God, yet he let you keep your body. He let you keep your life. He's given you food and drink. He's given you warmth and shelter. He constantly sustains you with everything that you need. And what did you give him in return? A thousand demons could have taken us long ago if God had not if God had paid us according to what we deserved. So when we hear Jesus speak in Luke, let's compare what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, where he says, But I tell you, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Then you will become children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sunshine on good and bad people alike, and he sends rain to the righteous and the unrighteous alike. So from these two passages, we understand something. We understand that God hates evil, but he still brings many blessings in this life, even to his enemies, by means of what is called common grace. Common grace. Common grace is the favor that he gives to all people, not just believers. These blessings are intended to lead unbelievers to repentance, to turn from their sins and turn to God. For example, in Acts 14, it says, In past generations, he permitted all the nations to go their own way. He did not leave himself without witness. And that he did good and gave you rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, satisfying your heart with food and gladness and joy. God wants us to be glad and be joyful in our lives. And he wants us to be satisfied in our hearts with everything. <coughs> Excuse me. So Romans 2, 4 declares to us, or do you despise the riches of his kindness, restraint and patience, not recognizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance? God's kindness is intended to, relieve, to lead you to repentance. earlier in the passage today it says that God is gracious to the ungrateful God is gracious grace karistos a karistos karistos is grace a karistos is without grace or without thanksgiving. Of course, there's a sense in which God hates those who resolutely and impenitently are wicked. And the psalmist says, the Lord tests the righteous, but his soul hates the wicked and the one who loves violence. When the psalmist says he, his soul hates, 
He means God's, God hates the wicked and violent with all the energy of his perfect and essentially holy nature. God's wrath is toward the evildoer and the one that delights in the violence of the strong against the weak. The more intense the hatred, the more fearful will be the judgments which burst forth. Even so, God's blessing of common grace constitutes the primary action of God's providence toward all humanity here and now. Even though God hates sin, he still shines light on the unrighteous, gives rain to the unrighteous, gives fruitful seasons, wants joy and gladness in their hearts. He still does. The children of the Heavenly Father are those who respond to his will as expressed in the ministry of Jesus that Luke reported um, in Luke chapter 12, where he says, But the one who did not know and did what deserved punishment will receive a light beating. From everyone who has been given much, much will be required. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, the more will be expected. Jesus says, I came to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already set ablaze. But I have a baptism to undergo, and how it consumes me until it's finished. Regarding the English word sons that we read in that verse just a moment ago. It's a Greek term that usually includes a male meaning component in it, sons. And it's used, it was used as a legal term in the adoption and inheritance laws of first century Rome. Okay? As used by the Apostle Paul, this term refers to the status of all Christians, both men and women who, having been adopted into God's family, now enjoy all the privileges, obligations, and inheritance rights of God's children. So the sun shines, and it rains on both the righteous and the unrighteous. God shows his grace and his care for all his creatures. Therefore, Jesus' disciples are to imitate God and love both neighbor and enemy. Part two, the enemy of suffering. What is the enemy of suffering? The enemy of suffering is ingratitude. Ingratitude. What? What do you say? Ingratitude. Yes. Not being thankful for everything that comes our way. Ungrateful for God's blessings and even for his trials, his temptations, inflicted, inflictions and sorrows. Let me share a few verses here to explain what I'm talking about. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. It's clear evidence of God's righteous judgment that you will be counted worthy of God's kingdom. For which... You also are suffering, since it is just for God to repay with affliction those who afflict you, to give relief to you who are afflicted along with us. This will take place at the revelation of the Lord Jesus from heaven, with his powerful angels, when he takes vengeance with a flaming fire on those who don't know God and on those who don't obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. 2 Timothy says, share in suffering as a good soldier in Christ Jesus. Hebrews 12, endure suffering as discipline. God is dealing with you as sons. For what son is there that a father does not discipline? But if you are without discipline, which all receive, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. 
You are not truly a son. You're not legitimate. 2 Corinthians 1, 5 through 7 says, Just as the sufferings of Christ overflow to us, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings that we suffer. And our hope for you is firm. Because we know that as you share in the sufferings, so you will also share in the comfort. Philippians 3, verse 10 and 11, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. In Isaiah chapter 3, we're, uh, 53, excuse me, we are told what Jesus suffered on the cross. It says, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. I pray, God, that I may share in your sufferings, becoming like you in your death, that by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It's not like I have to work to attain the resurrection from the dead, but that, that my life would prove that I am a legitimate son or daughter of God that I have the hope of the resurrection and the life to come in Christ Jesus. That's what it means, folks. That's what it means to endure COVID-19 or any illness that may befall you or any tragedy that you may experience, any loss of loved one that you may experience. Remember that our Lord Jesus bore all of your sorrows on the cross. That he took them all, all by himself. He was alone on the cross. Have you ever felt alone, so alone in your suffering? You've always had someone there, I'm sure. Haven't you? Remember, he bore our iniquities, the wrath of God that's due unto us. What we deserve is the wrath of God. So how do we defeat the enemy of suffering? How do we defeat ingratitude? Philippians 4, 4-7. Paul says this. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, I will rejoice. Sue and I were praying, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We tried to rejoice as much as we could when we were sick. But let your reasonableness be known to everyone. What does that mean? Don't complain. Don't complain to others about your sorrow, about your sickness, 
about your laws. But complain to God if you're going to complain. Read the Psalms. Let me share something with you from Dietrich Bonhoeffer. The Psalms, a prayer book of the Bible, where he says, No individual can repeat the Lamentation Psalms out of his own experience. It is the distress of the entire Christian community at all times, as only Jesus has experienced it entirely alone, which is here unfolded, because it happens with God's will. Indeed, because God knows it completely and knows it better than we ourselves. Only God himself can help, but therefore also, but therefore also must all our questions again and again, assault God himself. And Paul continues, Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Beloved, the Lord is coming soon. Look around you. Read the paper. Watch the news. The Lord is coming soon. The signs of the times are growing more and more like the days of Noah. It'll be worse, Jesus says. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. Don't be fearful. It's like, we don't have to be afraid anymore. We got COVID-19. Yay! Really? Be anxious about anything. <laughs> but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. It takes a lot to say, thank you God for me being sick as a dog. Yeah. But there was a time when I couldn't take that deep breath. But thanks be to God, my oxygen level stayed up there where it's supposed to be. Only by God's mercy and God's plan. Maybe for this day. Maybe for your ears. In everything, by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. We pray the Jesus prayer over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Have mercy on Sue, who's coughing up a lung. Have mercy on me when I was having a fever. And then Paul says, and the peace of God. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust his word. And the peace of God. Jesus says, my peace I give it to you, unlike the peace of the world. My peace surpasses all of your understanding. And what will that peace do for you? It will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Isn't it great? The peace of God, which surpasses all of your understanding, guards your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's what's the best part. And even... You're lying there, sweating bullets, fever over a hundred, and yet the promises of God is there. The promise of God tells you and gives you the hope that does not disappoint. Amen? The hope does not disappoint. But it guards your heart from the attacks and the assail. The, assail, the, the assaults of the devil. It takes away the ingratitude and gives you grace. 
that gratitude, to that thankfulness that you have time with God to endure this suffering, to endure this loss, to endure whatever pain or sorrow you may be going through. That you know that Jesus is walking with you and at times he may be carrying you through it all. The enemy of suffering is ingratitude. Dispel the enemy of suffering. by praying and giving your request to God with thanksgiving so that the peace of God that would permeate you spirit, soul, and body and guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. It's in his name I pray. Amen. Amen. His eyes on the sparrow. I thought of this song when we were ill. We were talking about that. That even though the Lord knows every sparrow that falls from the sky, why should I feel discouraged? Let's sing this.
How many of you know that he's watching you? Amen. Right? Come on now. I want to see. If you don't know, he is watching you. He's watching you. Please stand with me as we come together with a church over 2,000 years old. Together with the rest of the body of Christ, let us profess our faith this morning. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let's prepare our hearts and minds to pray this morning for the church and the needs of the church and pray for those who are sick. Believe me, the prayers that go out for the sick, they are heard, they are felt, and the Holy Spirit transmits those prayers and that comfort to you from God. And we pray for those with these health needs in Jesus' name on the back of our bulletin and all the names that are listed there. Let's pray together. And please respond with your own prayer. O Lord, your servant Joseph endured hardship and struggle, yet discovered what it, that it was meant for good. Give us such tested faith, and bring us all things, and bring all things to completion according to your purpose in Christ, the new Adam who has brought hope to the world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. Lead all pastors, missionaries, and church workers in faithful service to your people with compassion and love. Bless every place where we hear your word and serve our neighbor in Christ's name. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Help all parents who have brought their children to Christ in holy baptism also to bring them faithfully in the divine service. Bring them to church that he may continue to take them in his arms. And bless them through his word, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, your love will have its way with us. Lead us to expect no self-interested reward, but to love our enemies and serve those in need. Put an end to all bitterness and strife. Let forgiveness reign between each and every one of us, even as Christ's blood covers our sins before your heavenly throne. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father, I pray that you give all civil authorities and those responsible to you for the welfare of our nation, state, and community to steadfastly pursue the cause of justice and protect life from beginning to natural end. Father, guard all first responders and protect those who defend us here and overseas. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father, I pray for you to comfort all the comfort, with the comfort only you can give. Deliver the sick according to your will, and give them a heart of thanksgiving in their illness and in their recovery. And sustain by your grace those troubled in body or soul. Be with the dying. Give them the word of hope, and grant them peace in coming to you at last. Give your comfort to those who grieve. Grant your children patience and courage to endure every time of trial with hope in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you will bring all things to completion according to your order and to your time. When Christ comes again and all the dead are raised, number us, I pray, we pray, among all the saints in the world. Clothing the perishable with imperishable. Clothing the perishable with imperishable and bringing us into eternal life. Through 
Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now it's time to take up our morning offering. receive the benediction this morning. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his favor upon you and give you his peace. That peace which passes all of your understanding. And you're going out and you're coming in, you're lying down and in your rising up. From this day forth and forevermore, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Grace, love, and fellowship. This is a wonderful song that we're going to conclude with today. And I want to remind you of our fellowship time after church today. Um, so please join us downstairs for coffee and treats. Thank you. Grace, love, and fellowship. Mm -hmm.